Hi, in this video I'm going to take a look at the new functionality in Cubase 12 to analyze an audio file and determine which chords were used. I will check out how well this actually works on the song of my band The Wash and I'll also go into what you can actually use the chords for once you have them. So let's go! So looking at the Steinberg website, this is what Steinberg is saying about the new functionality. Audio to MIDI chords. Have you forgotten what you just played? Don't worry, just drag your audio recording to the chord track and Cubase will lay out the chord progression for you. And if the detection does not match your scale, the chord assistant can suggest the nearest alternatives based on the following chords. The new Create Chord Events from Audio feature in Cubase blurs the borders between audio and MIDI, letting you focus on the music just like it should be. And it's available in pretty much every version of Cubase. So let's have a look at how this works on a track of our band The Wash called The Calling, for which I have a whole series of videos detailing the way we produce this track. And I will link that playlist in the description below. But let's have a look at the mix project. So this is the mix project with lots of tracks and automation. In total, 180 tracks, including the effects tracks. But to show you the audio to chords functionality, I will use one of the reference tracks, because one of the reference tracks is actually the previous mix of this song. Dynamic Mix 9 for Watch the Calling. And I'm going to let Cubase analyze that one and see which chords it comes up with. And remember, this is not just one instrument. This is a full dense pop rock production with all the instruments and vocals in there. So the first thing you need to do is add a chord track. And I can now drag the audio into the chord track. And I will do that by holding control so that it doesn't move sideways. Cubase is now analyzing the audio. And there we go, lots and lots of chords. So if we zoom in a bit in the beginning, and if we look at where verse one starts, because that's where we actually start playing full chords. In the intro, it's not really full chords yet. It's more like loose arpeggios. Then I'm sort of recognizing the chords, but it's not quite entirely accurate because this is the actual lead sheet or well, chord sheet of the song. And basically we're repeating that first line of four chords all throughout the first part of the song up until the bridge. We're just playing them slightly different in various sections of the song. But if we now focus on these four bars here, they should actually contain the chords that are on the first line of the chord sheet as well. So as you can tell, it's not quite right. Let me add a piano track that actually plays the chords that Cubase came up with. So I'm adding an instrument track with Hellion Sonic SE. And I'm going to add an acoustic piano, the Yamaha S90 working. And on the chord track, I can now select that I want the chords to be played by the track called Piano. And let me set the locators to the section of the song that we want to have a look at, which should be F minor, E flat 6, D flat major 7, and B flat minor 7, 9. So if we listen to this without the vocals, it should sound like this. And if we now listen to this together with the piano track based on the chords, So it's quite different, but I do recognize some of the chords. It starts with F minor. So let's get rid of this one and actually move the F minor to the first beat. Next one is E flat six. So this F minor over here can go. This E flat needs to be moved to exactly the beat. And if we double click on this, we get the chord assistant. If you select that tab and you can see here in the detect tab, Cubase tells us what chord it thinks it is, but it also has some other suggestions based on the likelihood. So according to Cubase, the most likely chord is E flat sus four, but actually it's an E flat six. So I can select that and then it's yet corrected to E flat six. Now the next chord is a D flat major seven. So let's get rid of this one and put the D flat on the beat there. Again, third option is D flat major seven. So let's select that one. And the last one seems to be on the beat B flat minor, which is correct as a basic chord, but we have some extensions in there being the seventh and even the ninth, which we can add via the editor over here. So let's listen again how it sounds together now. Yeah, 
yeah, so this sounds a lot more correct, but Cubase was quite off. You really need to know the real chords for this section to be able to correct Cubase. And if at any time you want to go back to the detected chord instead of the one you corrected it to, you can open the chord assistant again. And you see that I manually selected E flat six, but Cubase actually detected E flat sus four. So for this part of the song, the detection mechanism in Cubase was not very accurate. Let's move to another part of the song. Because starting from the bridge, we have some less complex harmony really. So over here you can see we have A flat major, D flat major, F minor, and still F minor. Again though, this F minor should be on the beat, so I need to move it. Somehow it detected the F minor a little bit late. And there's a second F minor in the next measure. So let's copy that one over. If we move on a little bit further, the next measures are A flat, D flat, F minor is detected late again, so I need to move it again to the beat. And it correctly detects that we go from F minor to F major over here. So that part of the detection in this song was pretty accurate, I would say. In general though, I would say that any course that this Cubase analysis comes up with, don't take them as guaranteed and true, because it's probably off a bit, depending on how complex the chord progression is. But at the same time, at least you have something to start off with. Now at this point, if you like the video or find it useful, please give it a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and ring the little bell icon so you know when I post another video. And if you want to support the channel even more, I have a whole lot of affiliate links in the description which link to the equipment that I'm using in this studio. And if you want to buy anything at these stores, you can just click on one of those links, then make your purchase, and I will get a small commission on what you buy without any extra cost to you. So in case you're still planning to buy something at any of these stores, go ahead, use the links, highly appreciate it. But back to the audio to chords functionality to see how we can actually use this. So for me, this functionality would be quite useful if, for example, you wanted to do a remix of an existing song. In that case, you could analyze the existing song so that you can get a bit of a head start on adding or changing parts to the existing song. At least you know the harmony of the original song, so you can go by that to add, for example, parts or tracks to the remix. Another way to use this would be, for example, if you forgot the parts of a very old tune that you used to be able to play, maybe of your own band, maybe a cover, Again, Cubase can quickly analyze the audio and it will probably get you on your way to playing that song again. Or even if you've been in a songwriting session with somebody where the other person contributed the harmony, played the chords on a guitar for example, if you have a recording of that, Cubase can help you to find out which chords the guitar player actually played so you can further produce the song at home and add other instruments that play the same chords. Now let's have another look at what you can do with this chord track in Cubase once you have it. Because you already saw me add a piano track here with a virtual instrument. But you can now also drag these chords to the piano track. But let's first quantize them so that they're at least somewhat on the beat. Q. Now I can drag this down while pressing Ctrl so that it doesn't move left or right. And you can see that Cubase has now added all chords as MIDI notes. Which are available for you for further editing. And depending on which virtual instruments you have on this track. They can be played as straight block chords or patterns on a guitar virtual instrument for example, or maybe even bass lines that a virtual instrument creates from this harmony. Now another way would be to use these chords as input for vocal tuning, because Cubase 12 has also added the ability to use a certain scale or the chord track while editing with very audio. And if you want to see how that works, I've made a separate video on that, which I'll link over here. So have a look, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.